Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. I know, I know it's been a few days. Okay, it's been a week. All right, it's been a little bit longer than a week since I posted my last video and you'll have to forgive me, but uh, it's been busy around here. <coughs> Work and uh, personal life and birthday parties and that kind of thing. So just been very busy. Uh, what can I say? But here I am now with a new video. So what is this video about and why am I wearing these headphones I don't know anyway what is this video about I'm gonna install uh, Zen Orchestra on XCPNG and uh, I'm gonna do it my way uh, about a week ago or a few days ago Tom Lawrence over at Lawrence Systems released a video on how he installed uh, on his XCPNG server or let's just call it a Zen server and uh, so I was intrigued, and I tried it, and I failed. Uh, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was my Debian install. I don't know. He based his install off of Debian. So I went out and found an article on uh, installing uh, the orchestra software on an Ubuntu 1804 version, and I followed those steps, and I was able to get it installed and up and running. So that's what this video is going to be about. So uh, I could blather on all night, but go ahead and get the video started ha 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 just kidding this video assumes a couple of things so let's get them out of the way right right away it it, it assumes you have a 7.5 or 7.6 version of xcp ng installed and configured your your data repositories your iso libraries everything because we're not going to cover that in this video and if you need a video that helps you with that i have one of those videos and if I can remember, I'll do a little pop-up box that points you to that video. But anyway, uh, and it also assumes you have an Ubuntu 1804 server install available at your fingertips. So you'll need to make sure you have those two prerequisites out of the way before you begin this, you know, following along with this video. And, uh, uh, you know, use it as a tutorial if you like. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how I got it installed and up and running. All right, so we're over on our XCPNG server. It's actually running on that IBM. And uh, I have a machine already created. You see I have a copy of Ubuntu Base 18.04. I just copied that and created a new one and called it XOCE. All right, so I have my virtual Ubuntu machine up and running, and I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And the first thing you wanna do is uh, find out what your IP address is for this machine and right there on the screen it tells you IP address for each zero in my case is 5.58 now <clears throat> the reason you need to know this is because this is the IP address this virtual machine is set up to use a DHCP server now it's telling me I have a system restart is required uh, your mileage might vary on that but uh, what we're going to do next is install the XCPNG tools and then do the system updates so the first thing you'll want to do is I'm in a console session so you want to come up to your DVD drive and go ahead and uh, scroll down and choose your guest tools ISO give it a second for that to mount and then we're going to uh, we're going to go out to putty which is why we need to know the IP address here. So let's go out and open a PuTTY session uh, to this IP address 5.58. All right, so we're out at a PuTTY terminal and I've logged in and I've sudoed as the admin user and I've also installed the uh, uh, XCPNG tools. Now I need to install them. So I'm going to paste the following command sudo mount forward slash dev forward slash cd-rom space forward slash mnt which will mount the uh, cd-rom drive now if you get an error like this just wait a minute and type in the command again and eventually you'll get the following message that it's mounted is read only which is what we are looking for now the next thing i want to do is run the install for the tools so let me uh, copy and paste that command over there so there is the command uh, forward slash mount uh, forward slash mount forward slash Linux forward slash install dot sh and it will install the XE guest utilities I'm going to tell it yes to continue 
Okay, now it's telling you you should reboot this uh, machine. So we will go ahead and reboot it, and then once we uh, come back, we will install the update. So to reboot, just type R E B O O T at the terminal command, and you will see that it will reboot the XCPNG server. All right, so we're back at the XCPNG center, and if we come down to this machine we created and go to performance, we will now see both all the CPU, memory, network, and disk performance graphs are working. That's another way you know that the tools have been properly installed. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to come back to PuTTY, and I'm going to restart my session and log back in. Now we need to do the updates and you need to sudo as a super user that way you have permissions to do that alright so now let's do the updates for Linux and the well, first one we will do is the apt-get upgrade and there's the command apt-get space upgrade space minus y that way it doesn't prompt you to install it, we just install the files automatically. Go ahead and hit enter. Uh, let's see, there are no updates. So, good. Uh, it has done the updates. Now let's try, uh, there's one more command they want us to run. I don't know what it's for, but I'm just following the instructions. So, I'm going to run that. And it's removing, it's removing the old Linux headers, I guess is what it's doing. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and reboot this machine one more time. Just to make sure that we haven't broken anything. We'll come back here to XE at PNG Center and monitor it. See if it comes back up. Now don't be afraid of this CD-ROM. It can't read it as a boot disk. That's fine. All we're looking to do is get back into the Ubuntu server so we can install the uh, Zen Orchestra. And we will be installing this from sources and we will be compiling it ourselves. Now there's a script that I'm going to run and I'll share all this down in the show notes with you. I'm not going to do it here at this console. So now that we know it's back up, we'll come back out here to PuTTY, restart our session. You want to make sure you sudo as the uh, super user so that you have the right, correct permissions, I should say. All right, so the command to install uh, Zen Orchestra Community Edition is this one that I'm going to copy and paste in right now. And don't worry, we'll put this down in the notes down below. I'll also reference the article that I used to install this so you can follow along step by step. Now hopefully once we hit the enter key, everything will go as it needs to. Uh, this is gonna take some time. Uh, I It depends on the number of uh, physical CPUs you have dedicated to your virtual machine because it is gonna have to go down and download a bunch of files and then compile them. So it could take up to half an hour. So it says, don't worry, as it appears to be stuck at the successfully compiled screen, just be patient and keep waiting. So there's no need for you to sit here and watch all this text scrolling by. Uh, we'll go ahead and let it run, and then I'll come back uh, when something changes. All right, so uh, all told, that took 188.28 seconds. But keep in mind, I have eight cores assigned to this uh, to this virtual machine and two gig of RAM. So uh, I'm going to reduce the number of cores down to two or four once I get all done with this, but that could be why mine compiled so quickly. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm a, I'm an, I know it's Linux, you're not, you don't have to reboot after you do anything. Yeah, wrong, you do. Um, and I just want to reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and reboot and uh, come back in when it uh, comes back up just to make sure we have a clean slate. I'm gonna eject that guest tools DVD as well so we don't have a another failure. And it will boot here. It says boot device hard disk success. We should boot into Ubuntu 18.04 here in just a moment. And then we should be able to go out and see if uh, 
strings and orchestras installed. All right, so I've rebooted now, and I have verified the Zen Orchestra is up and running, as you can see here. It is up and running. I'm not going to log in yet, because according to the instructions, there is a, another curl script we want to run uh, that will update uh, Zen Orchestra for us. So, And we'll copy and paste that. You know, some people say you're not a true Linux person if you don't type in the lines manually. I guess I'm not a true Linux person, because here we go. Okay, again, uh, let's see. Uh, enter your credentials. Oh, they want your credentials in order to do the updater. So, we have a way to fix that. What you do is you type in this command right here and then enter your email. It can be a fake one if you want it to. I'm going to use my real one. And make sure that's in parentheses. And then you need to give it a username. So we'll do this command. Again, these are in the instructions. And we'll just type in Unky Joe. And now I can go back to that other command and hopefully it will run. Yes. So if you run into that error where it says you're not registered or whatever, just run those two commands I gave you. Uh, that's in uh, part five of the instructions that I'm linking in here. Again, it's going to have to run and it's going to have to compile. So depending on how fast and how many cores you have assigned to your virtual machine will determine how long it's going to take. Uh, it took less than five minutes for me last time, but... We'll let this run and we'll come back when uh, when something interesting changes. And so all told that took what, 187 seconds, so this, that's about three, four minutes it took to compile that new version and it went from, uh, I don't know whether it went from 5.29.4 to 5.29.3 or the other way around it. It's not real clear what that means. Uh, so uh, we'll just assume it's updated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and again, you don't have to do this, but I like to do that. I come from a Windows world, and it's always better to reboot your machine after you do an install than it is to not, just in case. That way everything, if there are any error messages, you'll see them when the uh, server comes up. So we'll let, uh, we'll let this Ubuntu 18.04, now uh, Zen Orchestra server, come back up, and uh, then we'll see if we can't log into the win web interface and uh, start putting uh, Zen Orchestra to work. So we'll come back after the machine is booted up. Now, I've gone to the IP address of my Zen Orchestra server, which is 5.58. You'll need to put in whatever address you use to get in there. The default login name is admin at admin.net, and the default password is admin. And so the first thing we're going to do is sign in, and then we're going to go change that. Uh, we're going to go change that admin password and username. Now, it, it tells we're using XO from the sources. That's great. For personal nonprofit, if you're a company, it's better to use our appliance with pro support. That's fine. Uh, but the reason I went ahead and did it from source is because it has a few more features than the community edition. So uh, that's why I'm using it. Now, the first thing I want to do is go down to settings and users. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new user, my custom username there, and it's going to be an admin user. And then we'll go ahead and type in a password, and we'll create that. Not now. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is log out, and I'm going to log in with that new username. Turn these off. I'm going to go back into settings one more time in users and I'm going to get rid of the admin user and tell it OK. And then if we come here to the home, we'll see that we don't have a server. That's easily remedied. We just click on add server. We're going to enter the uh, label and this is uh, this one should be XCP. Uh, this should be, I'm sorry, MCS. IBM XCP is the name and the address is 
5.7. Enter your username and password for that server. And make sure you click this button that says allow unauthorized certificates, otherwise it may fail on you. Because I do not have a cert installed for my XCPNG, which is, that's fine. It's on a local network, I'm not going to worry about it. Click on connect, and hopefully you will get a successful connection here. And yes, we did. We are connected. So if we come back home and go to our hosts, we will see that uh, our XCPNG is our master server. And then we can see we've got 16 processors, 47 gig of RAM, six network cards, and six different storage locations. We can get our stats. We can do a console into that server. We can play with the network adapters. We can play with the storage, patches. It shows everything is up to date, including the host, log files, and advanced. So I would say that would be a success. All right, so there you go. We got it up and running, got it installed, got it all configured. Uh, I have done previous videos on installing XCPNG. I'm going to have some more videos coming up on XCP. Uh, currently, I'm running version 7.5, and I'm going to update that to 7.6, and we're going to show you that in an upcoming video. And then I'll actually start doing some deep dives on Zen Orchestra. Like I say, I tried Tom's method uh, at Lawrence Systems. He's using a Debian, you know, Debian and Ubuntu, same thing. But he's using a Debian system. I followed his instructions. Uh, it's using uh, Debian 9, I believe. And uh, I could not get it to work. I, I don't know whether the problem was I had Debian configured wrong or what. But uh, I gave up on it and ran across this other article that I'm going to link to down below in the, uh, the notes section. And uh, follow those instructions. I've done this. I've done three or this three or four times and never had any problems with it. So now your mileage might vary, but uh, give it a try, and I think you'll find this is an easy way to do it. And then, like I say, the next thing I'm going to do is update the XCPNG from 7.5 to 7.6. Make sure I don't have any problems doing that. So there you go. Uh, fairly trivial to install that, as long as you've got all the basics done, and as long as you know how to install an Ubuntu server, that that's basically Ubuntu without a GUI on it. Uh, I used 18.04. You could use a, a different version, but again, the article I followed was based on 18.04, so I like to follow along as closely as possible. Uh, the other thing I didn't do is give uh, the Zen Orchestra a hard-coded IP address. That's because it's a convoluted piece of crap to modify an IP address on Ubuntu Server 18.04. Uh, there's special formatting that goes into the file that Ubuntu uses to determine whether it uses DHCP or static IP and I will cover that in yet another video because I'm sure there's going to be a rant that goes along with that. So anyway we hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always please leave your comments down in the comment section. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Smash the notification icon so you can be notified when we have new videos that come out. I am getting back in the saddle and we'll be doing more videos as time allows so you got that to look forward to. If you're so inclined to donate, we take PayPal and Patreon. The uh, links are down in the description and on my About page. So thanks again for coming to see us, and don't forget that we will see you on the other sides.